couple weeks ago, Sarah and I received an email from a subscriber who was responding to her video on firmer, harder erections using different foods. So it was a very lovely email and they said, you're giving these lovely natural alternatives and I struggled with erectile difficulty and in the end I, I had to use a prescription. I used a prescription drug to help with my erection because it wasn't really about what was happening in my body that was the problem. It was his brain. He said his brain was the biggest cock block. Absolutely your brain is the biggest cock block. 100% your brain factors into sex and the your sexual satisfaction and your sexual performance every single time. So in this video, I am going to be talking about the psychological factors that can impede your rock hard erection. My name is Kendra. I am a counselor and somatic sex educator here at ESC. And today I'm going to be talking about erectile difficulty. I like to call it erectile difficulty because erectile dysfunction is very pathologizing. Technically erectile dysfunction, you have to ha experience erectile difficulty or inability to get an erection or maintain an erection in 75 to 100% of all of your sexual encounters for six months or more. If that's you, maybe talk to a sex therapist because that's what we do is we help people who are struggling like that. Or you can just keep watching this video. Most men have experienced some erectile difficulty at some point in time in their life. And there are so many things that come into the quality of an erection that have nothing to do with what's actually happening in your body. Biological reasons are really just one of five potential contributing factors to experiencing erectile difficulty. Of the biological reasons, a portion of those are lifestyle factors, diet, exercise, alcohol, smoking. And that is what we tend to focus on on this channel because that is our angle. It's holistic and all natural ways to look at your sexual health. And that's not to say that there are not a lot of other things that will affect your heart. For the biological reasons, other things that you may want to consider if you're experiencing erectile difficulty would be things uh, like medications, SSRIs, which are antidepressants, which seems like everyone is on SSRIs these days, have a huge impact on libido and ability to maintain and achieve an erection. Also cardiovascular disease, diabetes, spinal cord injuries, things like that can certainly impact the quality of your erection. And so those are things that you would wanna to talk to your doctor about. That's the biological portion. Now what I will talk about is the brain cock block, is the psychological contributing factors. And when I say psychological, what I'm referring to are the conscious psychological processes that are happening while you're having a sexual experience. And I'm gonna explain it to you using a little diagram. So this is the erectile difficulty vicious cycle that people tend to get stuck in. So it all starts with a trigger possibility. Trigger possibility. And this could be, it's see, there it is. This could be a great many things. This could be stress. This could be relational difficulty, which is when we have a fight with our partner. We might just be tired. We might have had something to drink. We might be distracted by something that we're gonna be doing at work tomorrow. Or we might be feeling pressure to perform. Maybe somebody is putting a lot of pressure on us. Maybe it's ourself. Maybe we're expecting ourselves to perform like a 19 year old or like we used to when we were 19 and when you're 45 your penis does not perform the same way as it did when you were 19 years old if you use your younger self as a benchmark as to how you should be sexually performing you will you will inevitably fail but whatever it is something happens and this leads to the initial failure and then that leads to a lot of self doubt because often what happens after this initial failure is we don't talk about it or we don't acknowledge it or we don't analyze it or we don't try to figure out what caused it in the first place. And so we just think there's something wrong with us or something wrong with our penis and we have a lot of self-doubt. And that leads to what we call anticipatory worry. So we are worrying. We're like, oh no, something's wrong with my penis. It's not working the way it's supposed to. And when we are in anticipatory worry, that leads to performance anxiety. And we're like, oh crap, now we're going to have to perform again. And I don't know if I can. And the thing about performance anxiety, if we go into something and we're feeling nervous, it activates our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight 
and flight response. And a really bad time to get an erection is when we are in our fight or flight response. Cause we think like our body thinks we're being chased by a tiger. And so if we think that we're in danger, we're not going to get a hard on, or most people don't get a hard on. Sometimes that does it for people. So then what happens? Can you guess? We experience a repeated failure and we don't perform again the way that we wanted to which again leads to more self-doubt and we think that there's something wrong with us because this time maybe we weren't drunk maybe we weren't really stressed out maybe we weren't really tired that day but because of this it led to this which led to more self-doubt and it reinforces that it's actually there's something wrong with us and it's not the true cause, which is lying up here. So the way that you get out of this cycle right here is to recognize when you're in it. It's to notice when you are in performance anxiety, when your fight or flight system is activated and you keep having repeated automatic thoughts. It's about catching yourself, pausing, taking some deep breaths, calming yourself down to get out of this response back into your body and out of your head. Ultimately though, yes, a lot of the work comes in getting out of this cycle, but a big piece also rests in defining or identifying what this guy was for you. So overcoming erectile difficulty then is really about analyzing those triggers. It's about looking at what is getting in the way, what is causing the angst, and then how can I remedy this? Then that is easier said than done. Perhaps there's an important conversation that you need to be having with your partner. Perhaps you need to scale back at work. Perhaps you need to look at those things in your life that are causing you the most stress and look to mitigate those. If you're not 100% sure what your trigger is, your main trigger, or there can be multiple triggers, so if you're kind of looking to see how many are contributing, a good question to ask yourself is where else in life are you not fully showing up and inhabiting and embracing your full power and strength? Where else in your life do you feel that you are falling short? Because the way that we show up in the bedroom really is the way that we do life. So if there's an area in your life where you're feeling emasculated or you're feeling like you're not good enough, that is going to impact the way that you show up in the bedroom as well. And so that doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean that you're like, hey, I figured out why I can't get a hard on and so now I can get one. That's not really how it works. It's about you actually doing the work and then getting in there and figuring out what changes that you need to make, whether it is to behaviors, or lifestyle or mindset to help your body respond in a different way. I will be addressing more of the reasons. I told you there was five and then I just gave you two, the biological and the psychological. The other ones I kind of hinted at, but I will be going into them more in another video. That's all I have for you for today. And until next time, eat, squat, come, and analyze your cock blocks.